Good evening and welcome to this live stream broadcast direct from the Queensland Performing Arts Centre, QPAC. In live performance, we are used to just that, being live. There's something magical in the space between performers and audience tonight. And tonight, we bring you closer to QPAC than ever before. During tonight's performance by France's Ballet Prelucage in Brisbane for the exclusive 2016 QPAC International Series, we will take you to see Snow White. You'll be up close to the performers, behind the scenes, in the orchestra pit, with the Queensland Symphony Orchestra and connected to our audiences around Australia by the hashtag BP Snow White. You'll see costumes by fashion icon Jean-Paul Gaultier and sets by legendary designer Thierry Le Proust. You'll hear the music of Gustav Mahler conducted by Johannes Fritz. This is a major event for QPAC and we couldn't do it alone. And I'd like to thank the Queensland Government, including Tourism and Events Queensland, the Brisbane Festival, Brisbane Marketing, the Queensland Symphony Orchestra, and Fivestream, our live stream broadcast partners. You can find out more about QPAC, the International Series, and Ballet Prelucage at qpac.com.au, specifically on our creative learning portal, The Creatory. For now, enjoy the performance. Hi and welcome to QPAC's International Series and this very special presentation of Snow White by Ballet Prelacage. Over the next half hour we'll take a look behind the scenes at the ballet, the company and of course some of the very special events taking place around QPAC. This live stream is available to everyone in Australia with an internet connection so thanks so much for joining us. The QPAC International Series features an annual exclusive performance from some of the world's finest performing arts companies with a focus on dance and music, specifically ballet companies and world orchestras. Since its inception, Tourism and Events Queensland have shared the vision and helped QPAC welcome companies from all across the globe, Cuba, Germany, France, the United States and Russia. This is not only a way for Australian audiences to be able to see these world-class performances, but it's also a wonderful way to be able to exchange through the artistic community. Hailed by audiences and critics, this contemporary retelling of Snow White makes its Australian debut exclusively in Brisbane. This lush full-length story ballet by French choreographer Angeli Prelocage features massive sets, the magnificent excess of Gustave Mahler's symphonies performed by the Queensland Symphony Orchestra under the baton of Johannes Fritz and an all-star roster of French artists including set design by Thierry Le Prost and costumes by legendary haute couture designer Jean-Paul Gaultier. Prelocage conjures imagery of the original Brothers Grimm fairy tale from 1812, set around the innocence of a character with skin as white as snow, lips as red as blood, and hair as black as ebony, pitted against the evil deceit and obsession of her stepmother queen. It's a story that has since inspired countless pop culture interpretations for generations. But there's more to do than just see the show when you come to QPAC. The extension program seeks to ignite the imagination, stimulate thought-provoking discussion, and explore a suite of ideas and emotions. There'll be many activities taking place in the lead up to, and during the season to heighten your experience of the ballet. The extension program explores central themes from the production of Snow White and provides universal access to the ideas that drive the creation of the work. The themes of obsession and passion, vanity and narcissism are presented in a range of contexts, utilising many artistic forms and languages. From conversations to installation, performances to fortune-telling mirrors, QPAC delves into the core of Snow White through this extension program. We have a chat channel with QUT's Associate Professor Jean Moyle on hand to answer any questions you may have on dance. You can send through your thoughts and questions via Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Use the hashtag BPSnowWhite. As a special treat, send us in an Instagram picture of you watching the live stream and you may win a signed souvenir program. If you love the show and you really must see it, then head along to qpac.com.au and click on the Snow White tile to buy your tickets. Now, Sienna here plays a young Snow White. And why do they need to do that? Because it's almost sold out. It's almost sold out. Now, you have to go and get ready for a show. Yeah. I'll see you on stage. 
And you stay with me. We're heading behind the scenes to find out exactly what it takes to make this show happen and all the fabulous things that go along with it. It all started way back in June with a behind the scenes photo shoot for Style Magazine's July cover with Snow White. Well, Yuri, I guess to start off with, tell us a little bit about Ballet Pro Locage. Yeah, the Ballet Pro Locage. Uh, actually, Angela was, Angela Pro Locage was uh, as a dancer with uh, Dominique Bagouet when he started his, uh, to choreograph his own pieces. And uh, he set up the company in 1984 uh, together with uh, Nicole Saida, who is our uh, general manager, uh, exec executive director. And uh, since then, he created a lot, a lot of pieces, uh, almost 45, uh, I think, and, uh, big uh, uh, pieces like Snow White, Rome and Juliet, but also duets and, and uh, uh, pieces with less dancers uh, as empty moves and, and uh, quite different things. And uh, so today we are very happy and very proud to, to the company because it grew up as uh, a big ballet company and uh, we have 24 uh, dancers working permanently with the company but we also have dancers, extra uh, dancers for uh, some uh, shows. From an artistic point of view, this particular ballet, we hear the word Snow White and for many of us we conjure up those Disney images. This is far from that. We really are looking at the traditional story of Snow White as told by the Grim brothers yeah it's uh, as you as you told it uh, it's rather far from the the disney uh, um, uh, as a version as we all can imagine and and also uh, it's a version that, that everybody knows very well uh, this uh, one of Angela Prajukaj is more closer to the, the story of the brother Grimm, the brothers Grimm. um as he he, he uh, he realized more the, the moral aspect of the, the story and uh, the relationship between the, 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 the mother and, and daughter and uh, also... Uh, so, of course, the mirror is, is uh, a very central part of the... Well, I was about to say, uh, when, you, when you actually look at that story and obviously the way it's been pulled apart from that historic perspective, we can see how it speaks so clearly, though, in contemporary times, these ideas of narcissism, mm -hmm. of um, everlasting beauty, beauty is that something that's really obvious to the audience uh yeah i think so but but it's uh, always we we're talking about of course uh, uh narcissism and, and external beauty and and so uh, what's very actual to today uh, but uh more also a mirror as i, I told a few days ago uh a mirror, actually, if we have a courage to really have a look inside, he, he tells us what we became and, and uh, what and who we became. And uh, I think that it's all about, uh, because the, the, the queen is so much concerned about her external beauty. And of course, there is no white who is very beautiful and who is much younger also. So uh, it's getting a little bit difficult for her. But... In a certain way, uh, she didn't, didn't have the possibility to, to bring her external beauty, to complain it with an internal beauty. And, and that's what the story is about, I think. So it's the music is also quite extraordinary and very much uh, marries with this story. And, and given that it was also written around the same time, how is the music uh, enhancing this version of the ballet? But the, the music of, of Mahler in a general way is, is really a music who uh, we can make like a, like a bridge between romantic music and music of the 20th century. And uh, so as a composer, uh, I, we can s s uh, situate mm -hmm. him in, in that, that way, I think. Uh, so as Angela and Prajokaj, he wanted to make uh, f for this piece, uh, as he told by himself, uh, a contemporary romantic ballet. And uh, so the, the music of Mahler became like a, a, a kind of evidence for, for him. So he, he cho has chosen some parts of different symphonies who for him told already the story. The story was in it already. And uh, so w when he started uh, the, the, the creation uh, of this 
piece he had already the whole set of the music was done uh, because sometimes when he starts a new creation he has his own ideas and he, he there is some different music coming in and then he chooses and and i mean he tries uh, different for here it was very different it, the music was already all set. I, i did wonder that so with this particular piece it was the music first and then the dance came second Exactly. Yeah, he knew already. This will be the solo of Snow White. This will be the entrance of the Mother Queen. This will be for the Seven Dwarfs, and and so. You mentioned the contemporary element in terms of the dance. This is not a traditional ballet. We don't see any tutus on no. stage. What does that mean as well in terms of telling the story? The most uh, important thing with his, his work is the way that he makes the body speaking in a certain with movement, whatever if it's classical, uh, modern, contemporary, and, and and things like that. Uh, also, the, the set of the, the costumes and so because you mentioned uh, tutus and so no, the, 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 these are the costumes from Jean Paul. Gaultier, uh, that was uh, chosen to work together mm. for this piece. So it really bridges it bridges between design and costume, oh, yes, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. You've, you're visiting Australia for the first time. Uh, it's wonderful that you're part of this international series. What has been your interpretation of our not only our beautiful city but our audiences as well? It's a really uh, a wonderful audience, and also the, the work with uh, the orchestra, the Queensland uh, Symphonic Orchestra, with uh, Johannes Fritz was was really wonderful. Uh, we had a first rehearsal on uh, last uh, Tuesday, just after when we arrived, uh, and I was really impressed by the sound of the of the, the orchestra, and also the the how all everybody is uh, concerned. Uh, I mean, from the beginning till uh, till today, and and I'm sure it's, it will run on this way. Everybody is so concerned that we feel comfortable, that everything is okay, and and uh, and uh, I think it's, it's uh, I feel that also in the in the city of so, and and of course the, the the audience is really wonderful. Virginie, these costumes are just spectacular, and they really are not costumes; they're more like high fashion for the stage. Because mm -hmm. Jean-Paul Gaultier was the designer, what do they like to wear? Um, it's really nice to wear his costumes because uh, it's really nice and he, he made it uh, on us. It's like he created really like, okay, maybe like this, uh, it would be nice like this. And it was really nice to work with him and to wear his costume is fantastic. And I feel really great. <laughs> so really they were made for you. There was yeah. a, a full, full collaboration. Did you have a little bit, uh, were you involved at all with how they looked and, and felt on you? Um, it was a discussion between between Angelin, Jean-Paul Gauthier and the dancer because uh, he made, when he, he did something, we say, okay, maybe ma uh, now you can move mm. and feel how, and have the feeling that it's good or not. And we say, okay, maybe it's too tired <laughs> or it's, I, I can dance because uh, it needs to be stretched. And also we have to think about the other, the partner. Yeah. It, it doesn't be, um, Uh, slippering and he, he need to wear us so it, it's really interesting because it's a discussion and they look spectacular and they look so delicate and certainly not what many of us might think of when we think of Snow White's costume particularly the one that you wear at the end this is yeah. beautiful I think yes it's really beautiful I would like to have it for my wedding <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> no no but uh, yes it's really nice and it's The movement of the costumes at the end, it's spectacular for me and... Yeah. Visually, obviously, yes. magical. Yeah, 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 it's really magical. And your other costume as well is very, very fine. What do you do as a dancer to make sure that you take care of it when you're on stage? I don't think about it. It just, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I, I, I can hear like... <laughs> and I say, oh my God, the costumes, but I don't... Really, I don't care about the costumes because, like, I'm dancing. I'm just to. I just want to be on stage and don't think about the costumes and the um, the uh, the dresser. After is here to fix okay it. to fix it. <laughs> You've obviously danced in lots of different ballets. What's mm -hmm. the difference as a dancer to dance in these sorts of costumes compared to maybe the traditional tutu and point shoes? Yeah, because I think that we can be on the. Um, Uh, the character because it's really made it in function of the character and so when you have the when we have the costumes on 
on us, it's like I'm another person. It's, we can be really the character. Jack, I can only imagine how busy this area is come showtime. What's it like to get everybody in and out of these costumes through the show? It's very messy in here <laughs> during the show. There's 24 performers plus three dresses, all here trying to get everybody in and out. So it's great. It's fun. It's very funny at times, but it's interesting. Now, I know that many, including me, would think that there'd be several costumes just in case something goes wrong, but that's not the case. No, that's not the case. With this show in particular, they really do only have one costume each. Uh, well, for each scene that they do. So it's just a matter of bringing that many costumes out as well. I think that's more important. But, yeah, just the one. We look after them. They're very beautiful, but they are very delicate. And that's not always the case. No, it isn't. But dancers are very, very um, responsible. They will come to you immediately and go, I've just done this, I've ripped that, mm. I'm sorry, there's a hole here. <laughs> so you are, they're on the ball all the time, even though Virginia just said she doesn't think about it on stage. When she comes off, she tells you straight away. What's it been like for you to work with these particular costumes and given that they've been designed by one of the world's best? I have the best job in the world. <laughs> I really do. And we have the the great privilege of working with some of the best companies when we have our international series. So this is amazing. This is truly amazing. You never get your hands on these sort of costumes normally. There is one change that I know is a very quick, completely out and completely in that you have to do in what, 30 seconds? It's fairly fast, yes, and um, the Snow White actually comes off and she comes out of her normal costume into this. It's quite quick. Yes, just put shoes on, unitard on, skirt on. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to be Einstein to see that there's really not a lot to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fairly, yeah, fairly brief, I suppose, is what the word is. You have to be brave, I would think, to wear something like that. So Muller's composition is very well suited to this story. Why do you think that is? Oh, there are a number of reasons. And I, I had to think first a bit about it when, when I uh, was asked to conduct this show. Um, but then I realized that actually when Marla was born in 1860, the fairy tales collected by the Brothers Grimm and others like, like Ludwig Bechstein were very deep in the conscious of the, of the people there. Yeah? Mm. And this romantic idea of looking back to the past and collecting things from the past was, was a big part of the romantic culture. So, and I'm convinced that Mahler, even though he grew up in a Jewish environment, was very, very familiar with those stories. He never wrote a ballet, but I'm told, and I can't wait to see, that it's almost like it was meant to be a ballet. Well, this speaks well for the choreographer, for Angelon Brechocage, that he had a very, very tasteful selection of parts of Mahler's symphonies. Mm. I know Mahler never wrote a ballet nor, nor an opera. Are there any particular challenges for you with this piece? Well, uh, usually we perform Mahler symphonies here in the concert hall, where we are right now, with a big orchestra, with a full orchestra of 100, 110 maybe. Um, one challenge is to have this orchestra a bit smaller for the pit in the lyric. We fit 68 musicians in there, so that affects the sound and the balance, of course. But uh, the major issue is, of course, that we perform with a ballet, with a dance company we have not worked with before. So we had two days to get it together. So I have to see and try to accommodate their needs in terms of tempi. They have to get used to the sound of a live orchestra. They have been performing this particular production for many years with recorded music. So they are not used to have a live orchestra, which is a bit different every night. Mm. Yeah, that's not exactly the well, same. Well, it has its own personality. Yeah, of course. And I, I think finally they enjoy it much more than a recording, I hope. <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> and for you personally to conduct this, what is that like for you? Uh, you know, I've, I've conducted ballets in previous years and in, in, especially in Germany and Austria where every opera company has its own ballet company mm. and the orchestra works for the ballet company as well as for, for the opera. So I've conducted many ballets, classical ballets like Romeo and Juliet and then Swan Lake and Nutcracker. So I know what dancers, f how they feel, how they, how they tick in a way, yeah, how they work. And it's quite enjoyable in now once we've got it running um, to conduct those the music by Mahler and watch the dancers in this phenomenal production. 
It's so wonderful, of course, nothing um, can replace being in an audience to hear the music and to see it live, but tonight so many more people will be able to enjoy this through the comfort of their living room. Is that a lovely way for you to be able to share what you do with a greater audience? Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's a very, very interesting and, and nice feeling to know it's not just the 2,000 people behind us in the concert hall, but many, many more around Queensland. Is it lovely to be a part of this international ensemble but be on home turf? Of course, of <laughs> course. Um, well, this is, I guess, where my love of dance originated from, so it's really nice to come home and to share it with family, friends and the whole of Australia. So. What's it like living in France? It's, I love it. I really love it. Um, I'm not crash hot on the French language, <laughs> uh, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Tell us about this particular show because it's this wonderful contemporary spin on a classic fairy tale, but told in a way that not everybody would fully expect. Yeah, well, it's, um, I'd have to say it's definitely a lot darker uh, than the normal t uh, fairy tale. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite extreme. There's a lot going on. Um, but it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, show because we've got a lot of collaboration with the costume, the music. It's, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And I think my favourite uh, character is the Queen. It also means it's very hard on, uh, we know how, how dancing is hard on a, on a dancer's body anyway, but what do you do to take care of yourself, particularly when you're, you know, doing these sorts of movements for hours on end? Yeah, well, I find um, depending on the show, um, I will make my warm up according to the show that I'm doing. So this one, uh, for Snow White uh, because I am a cat and I'm on, on my knees a lot um, I do a lot of uh, yoga warm up uh, just to warm up the legs um, so there's no surprises <laughs> um, yeah so that's it's very imperative depending on the, the show uh, I warm up according to that are you staying home for a holiday when this show finishes or have you already got the next one booked? No, uh, we've, uh, we've got to go straight back after the last show. But I did, we had two days off yesterday and I went home to Sydney to see family and friends and it was absolutely lovely, even though it was under 48 hours, but it was, it was wonderful. Well, the lovely thing, of course, about this live streaming is that everybody, even your family in Sydney, will be able to watch tonight and see you on stage. Have you got a special me message for your friends and family? Hello, 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 hello. I miss you already. <laughs> Saw you yesterday, but miss you already. Um, yeah, hope, hope you enjoy the show. So Bill, here we are in the QPAC tunnel and it's not just left blank, this really becomes a canvas for a wonderful show like this. Yes, it's a huge sort of extra you know, bonus for the, the people who come to the show but also the people who you know, work in the city and come from the train station at one end through to, to the, um, the riverside. So yeah, it's a big, it's a big plus for people you know, walking through QPAC. Really. And that's really why you do it, right? This installation is for everybody, who, all the foot tra traffic who comes through here. Ab absolutely, yeah. You know, they're, they're usually up for quite a while. So tell us about this and the inspiration obviously being this ballet Snow White. Well, we sort of keyed it off um, the, com the choreographer's um, uh, quote that we use in the middle of the tunnel about it being, you know, the, the mother's story, really. So it's the themes to do with the mother's jealousy, envy, her sense of narcissism, her ideas of beauty that, that sort of force women to do that, perhaps. Uh, or some women, anyway. And some men. And some men, absolutely. Well, we were very conscious of that. There's a number of men featured in the tunnel because I didn't want it to be just about women. You know, obviously men can be as vain as women too. So, yeah. It's a but it really does comment on the contemporary spin of this story that is hundreds of years old. Ab absolutely. I mean, the, you know, that's the reason that art works are, are done is that they still have a continuing relevance and if we can use something like the tunnel to sort of elaborate that for people and give people something to think about um, you know above and beyond what they're already being pushed to think about watching the the dance then that's great. Can you talk us through any particular highlight? Oh there's I, I like to think there's a lot of highlights down the down the length of it as I say I like to give a lot of richness you know as you walk along through if you peer into it there are some interesting quotes and I suppose I try and use contrasting quotes so you might get one opinion there's a great one from um um, Dolly Parton about I'm, I'm unafraid of having uh, plastic surgery and then there are other sort of ones that are a bit contrary to that as a, an ideal of beauty. So there's all sorts of riches to be found I think if you take the time to peer into it. 
Tonight's live stream is one of these extension programs. It means that everyone will be able to enjoy Snow White. Not only will you be able to do it from the comfort of your living room, but we'd love you to send through some feedback and you can even ask questions through the performance as well. If you're having trouble with your technology, the team are here to help. Email them at info at fivestream.com and they'll do their best to get you back up and running.